Hello, my name is Fusebotic, and today I'm going to be showing you a quick tip that furthers on a tutorial video that I saw by Jonathan Williamson on the CG Cookie website. Um, he was describing different methods and edge tools to refine uh, the subsurf modifier to get some tighter edges. He went over three techniques, uh, and you can go over and watch it, it's very informative, but he neglected to mention a fourth technique, which is actually something I don't think most people in the blend Blender community know about, if at all. Um, I've never seen any videos demonstrating it, I've never seen any models that have it, but I did however see a video by Ben Mathis uh, demonstrating the technique in 3ds Max. Now since I know a little bit about 3ds Max, I was able to transfer over the technique to Blender, and um, that's what I'm going to show you today. So to start off, I'm going to show you um, this polysphere. So in Jonathan Williamson's tutorial series, he, or tip, I should say, he showed the best technique was to use refining loops. And that is fine for flat surfaces, maybe like with guns and different basic objects that don't require much refinement uh, as far as surface changes go and things of that nature. Um, but whenever you want to add refining loops to a circular object or something that has a curvature curved surface like if you want to inset this uh, square here in a sphere it kind of breaks down and so if, if you wanted a circle indent you can do that you can uh, even add a refining loop like that whatever but if you want to make this a square indent or a very hard indent it's going to be somewhat difficult because the moment you start adding refining loops it's going to ruin the rest of the mesh it's going to make all these nasty creases going every which way and you're either going to have to tweak these manually and get it to look almost perfect or you're going to have to factor this indent into your modeling workflow from the very beginning and um, Ben Mathis showed a very nice technique that voids all of this. You don't even have to mess with refining loops if you don't want to. So in Jonathan Williamson's video, he showed or demonstrated the uh, edge creasing, which is right here. You can hit Shift E um, and modify it if you want to. And the problem with this is that it does give a sharp edge. and if you look at it in flat face mode and if you turn up subdivisions a few times it looks decent and this is a technique that I showed off um, in one of my previous videos but I didn't show the fact that it looks kind of weird whenever you show uh, whenever you enable sh smooth shading um, so I found a way to counteract this and this was through uh, Ben Mathis's video again um, and the way you do it is you select your edges that you want to crease, just crease them, and then you add a second subdivision surface. Now, as you can see, uh, it gives a very nice kind of um, square indent. It's not quite as sharp as you might want it. Um, you can actually modify this by turning up the first subdivision surface and then turning this one up. Now you get a almost perfect square indent without any of the creasing along the other sides of the sphere. I just thought this was pretty pretty cool. Um, it may not be uh, the best uh, solution, but it is very nice to have um, instead of having to ruin your entire mesh just for uh, you know, a simple indent in, in the side of it um, because this is a problem that I'd run into quite often and most modelers do anyways and just by doing this you can get a very clean cutout um, without much trouble or much shading errors um, and if you want to be if you want the shading to look better uh, you're going to want to decrease this and increase the secondary one if you want to be sharper, increase the first one and decrease the second one. Then um, you can play around with these values until you get something that looks right. Um, and you can still 
use refining loops if you want to. Um, I, with a shape like this, I wouldn't do try and do that because it's going to modify the silhouette of the object and the entire form of it, and that's why I'm using these edges in the first place. But in order to um, show how this would look on Jonathan Williamson's example mesh, uh, I've made a mesh here. Just put on the uh, sharp edge creases, and I've put on two subsurf modifiers. You see that I have the first one turned up quite a lot because I want these to be very sharp, and the mesh isn't very de dense at the moment. You can add more loops if you want to, um, but this is actually a perfect uh, roundness for a mesh that you would put into a game engine bake. So if you wanted to bake a normal map, this is the kind of roundness you'd want, because if you get too sharp, like something like this, it's not going to even, the curvature or the transition between the edges isn't going to be visible on the normal map itself because it's going to be such a low resolution. So having something like this is especially useful um, whenever you're baking normal maps. And uh, it, it'll it probably uh, change your workflow a little bit. Um, I'd recommend going over and seeing Ben Mathis's video, which will be in the description. He explains it a little bit more in depth, and you can see some uh, applications that he has, like he has some armor modeled with the uh, technique in mind, and it's very, very useful. I'm surprised not many people know about it, especially in the Blender community. I've never seen any videos or techniques demonstrating this, even though it is a great technique and should be more popularized. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and um, found it useful. Um, I I thought it was pretty cool when I first saw it. I was like, hey, I want to do something like this, and it's it's gonna be I don't know. It's gonna change my workflow quite a lot, and I hope that you can use it to do some pretty cool details and things. And it gives your it, do, it doesn't give the most sharp mesh uh, if you're as opposed to using uh, fine loops, but it does give a very um, less gives a it preserves the forms of the mesh better than having to reorganize edge flow to accommodate refining loops. But anyways, thanks for joining me in this tutorial. I'll see you next time.